Okay, so let's take a quick look at how we configure the client organizations to be uh, effectively an access filter on your data. So the easiest way to do this is, is twofold, basically. The first is we need to create the client organizations and make sure that the client organizations have the relevant name and the relevant uh, ID associated with them. And we can do that quite simply within the administration console. So let's just quickly jump there and take a look at that. Uh, so in the admin console, click on client organizations. And as you can see, I've got set up the name of uh, four organizations. I've ensured my default is one, so it, it's tucked out of the way I can always get at it. But my uh, actual organizations, my client organizations, I've got four named. I created those with their name and I created the reference ID to match the organization ID within the data. This is quite key because when it comes to actually filtering, this is what it's going to filter on. Okay, now Yellowfin will sort these in order, so don't worry about the number, just worry about the name and make sure a number matches. But we can see quite clearly that we've got those organizations named. If I click on one of these organizations, say Test SSO, I've added a name in there already. So I've got username set up within uh, the system as well. Uh, okay, so I've got the name, Test SSO, reference ID 51, because that is the uh, organization ID for that organization um, and they're stored and that's set, etc. So I can ensure those are in place. And just for other reference, DevRage Systems, for example, um, is client reference ID or your organization ID of 50 and a different user associated with 50. So that's done. Once I've created those and set those, that's it. There's nothing more that I need to do from the client reference ID point of view. Okay, so that's that's preset. Now, what we also need to do at this point is ensure that our data actually has that um, organization ID within it. Um, now, I've updated my data table to show exactly that. So I've got within my data table, um, it's very basic, but I've got the location ID, I've got a date, I've got a number, and I've got an organization ID. Um, so uh, I've got a bunch of things that are in there. Um, already available for us to actually use. So we can quickly see on my screen here um, that we've got uh, within data, I've got a location ID, date number, an organization ID, um, and this obviously changes. So I've got two organizations set up that I can show you by way of examples, but lots of different location IDs within those organizations. So for 51, I've got 402, 51, 402, 403, and 404 as locations. And for organization 50, I've got 63 and 41 available. So I've got, a, I've got a little bit of a mix there available to me to play with. Okay, so I don't need to do anything to my data sources for the client reference ID to work. What I do need to do is ensure that my view um, of that data actually has that organization ID associated with it. So within my data view for that data source, if I edit the view, I'll show you what I've done in here. <clears throat> I've got my four columns um, as normal, you expected those, we just saw those on the table. But in my preparation side of things, in my organization ID field, I've gone into edit format access and I've selected the client reference ID that has now shown up because I've created the client organizations with those reference numbers, okay? So now what will happen is when the user logs into a particular client organization, the data will be filtered to only include uh, items from this data database, um, this data table to have that organization ID. So if I was to log in um, as uh, one example, I would only get um, all of the organization that is uh, 50. If I log in as radar, uh, SSO test, I get the organization uh, that is 51, etc. That's how that's going to work. Okay, so I'll just publish that and make sure that's uh, safely done and tucked away. And I can show you exactly that. And I'll show you some more stuff, but I'll quickly show you the results of that now. So if I log in as radar, <clears throat> I've created a number of reports already. <coughs> Excuse me. 
created a number of reports already, put those on the dashboard um, so we can already see some things. So logged in as radar, uh, organization is 51, um, my location is 402, 403, 404, um, that's absolutely fine. And test SSO, etc. A number of locations is counted up the three, one, two, three. Um, I can flip that round and see those 402, 403, 404. Um, uh, and the same with their actual names, etc. They're associated with it. My data table that uh, we were just looking at um, has already been filtered for 402, 403, and 404. That's all I can see uh, returning from that. And uh, I've added onto this dashboard just. Uh, the data, all the data, but only on the organization filter. So whatever is potentially there for any location would be shown up. But as I've only got those three uh, for this particular user, that's what's uh, being displayed there. OK, so that's just the client organization side of things. Um, that's just that filter uh, and that's already active. So I'll just prove that. I'll just log in as uh, one example as well, which should give us the um, the other organization so there we go we can see organization 50 um, has shown up now just for that particular user lots of different location IDs potential uh, for this particular user it's not filtered on those just yet uh, we're going to do that next uh, and we can see the full data down the bottom there which is just picking up what's available from the database in that data table for that uh, particular organization. OK, so we can see that, that that filter is working as expected. OK, so I'll just stop this video and then we'll go on to the next step, which is the access filters.